Okay, good morning. We are uh, learning Maseches Ksubis Daf Lamed Gimel, which is actually today's Daf, which is surprising. We haven't done the right day's Daf in like five days, so I'm glad we're back on back on track. And we've been in the midst of a sugya here in this parak of Elunaros that really started with a contradiction, seemingly, between our Mishnah here in Maseches Ksubis and a Mishnah that's found in Maseches Makos. And what we were struggling with was when one has a double consequence on them, that they're both obligated in Malkos and in Mamon, which one takes precedence? We don't do both. Seemingly, we don't do both. Uh, but one of them has to win out. And it seemed that we saw, according to Ula, that the money wins out. And it seems, according to Rabbi Yochanan, that the Malkos wins out. We paskin like Rabbi Yochanan, that's kamle b'dirav that the greater of the punishments is taken and the smaller of the punishments falls off. Fine. The problem is that we don't understand why Rabbi Yochanan holds the way that he does. And that's our starting point for today on the very bottom line of Lamed Beis, Lamed Beis. The Gemara says, Rav Yochanan, my time lo amar kiula. Rav Yochanan, why does he side with the fact that it must be Malkos and not Mamon? When Ula says it's Mamun and not Malkos, what was pushing Rav Yochanan to not hold like Ula? And the Gemara responds, Im Kain, had it been that money was the override, then bitalta ervascha achos chalos segale. Then remember what our Mishnah was talking about, all of the cases of achos. Achos this and achos that. If a man violates his sister of 10 different iterations, his... Uh, from the father's side, from the mother's side, is, uh, all the uncle's sister, all the different cases, they were all sisters. So he says, if you're going to look at that Mishnah and say that Mamon always wins, then what about the Pasuk? The Pasuk says that if you violate the Isra of Ervasa Choska Losegala, what's the general rule when you do a lav in the Torah? You get Malkos. So says the Gemara, if you always say that Mamon is going to win, so then what about the Pasuk in Chumash? What happened to the Malkos? How can Ula override a Pasuk in Chumash? So that was Ula's, uh, Ula's Shita. And Rav Yochanan didn't like Ula's Shita because if Ula were to be right, that money were, were to be the override, then we'd be stuck with the fact that we would no longer have the Pasuk in Chumash that says we should get Malkos. Says the Gemara, come on, Rav Yochanan, not, not a great argument, because if that were to then be true, forget about what the Mishnah speaks about, about Achoscha. We have so many other cases like that throughout the Torah. Chovel Bechavero Nami, top of Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis. The case of Chovel Bechavero, which was a case where one injured a friend and therefore was obligated in two things of Mamun and Malkos, in Cain but Vitalta, where we said that you have to give money, then you've also nullified what the Pasuk meant, Lo Yosif, Pen Yosif, that Pasuk, uh, literally is talking about adding consequences. And what it means here is that you really should have gotten Malkos, and that would have been overridden here too. And Edim Zomamin Nami, in King Vitalta Vayoyim Bina Kosa Rosh, in regards to Edim Zomamin, we also would have had a case like that where we would have seemingly seen that Vitalta, that you have, um, that with the Shita of Ula who says money, we would have overridden what the Torah would have said, which is Malkos. And because of that, it's pretty clear that Rav Yochanan didn't understand Ula correctly because it wasn't just about Erva Sachoscha. Obviously, Ula was thinking a little bit differently. Ella says, the Gemara, We are able to establish a case of Ben Grusha, Ben Chalutza, where we are able to have Malkos. And uh, Rashi discusses what this case is. And in regards to Chol Bechaber, we could also come up with a case where one would be Chayav Malkos as well. And Achoso Nami, Ikalikiuma Beachoso Bogeris. We could also come up with a case with the Achoso where she's going to get Malkos. In other words, uh, Rav Yochanan's whole understanding of Ula is, is really incorrect. And therefore, we need to understand a better reason for Rav Yochanan for not wanting to hold like Ula. And therefore, the Gemara says, uh, eight lines down or so on Lamed Gimel, Lamed Aleph, the deeper reason of Rav Yochanan, is Amrlach Rav Yochanan, the reason why I can't hold the hold of Ula is not because of a conceptual, whether or not we're going to be mevatel a mitzvah sasei in Chumash, so, uh, uh, excuse me, whether or not we're going to be mevatel Malkos from the Pasuk in Chumash, but Amrlach Rav Yochanan, hi, the Pasuk that Ula relies upon to establish his Shita, which we learned on Shabbos, I already need that Pasuk for something else. And therefore, see, there's a difference between arguing the concept and arguing the source. We started off by saying Rabbi Yochanan was arguing the concept. The Gemara was saying, no, the source is fine. The, the concept is fine. The problem is the source, the Mari Makom, the source that Ula uses to teach us that money is the winner when it's money in Malkos, that source is already used. Amar Abaye, Asher, uh, Amar Kra, 
Tachas Asher Ino, Hai Tachas Asher Ino, Michlal Di Ika Bosha Supgam. That Pasuk teaches us that we have some fiscal payments that we have to pay. And where would Ula learn that from? The Ula Nafkale Midi Rabba, Omar Rabba, Omar Krav, and Nosa no Isha. That the hana that he had from being with her is a punishment of chamishim. And when he's with her, that also implies that she had some busha, and that of course there is a pigam, it lowers her status. So, in short, we started off with one question today, which is why does Rabbi Yochanan not hold of Ula? And the answer is because the pasuk that Ula used is already being used by Rabbi Yochanan for another purpose, which is to teach us about some separate financial. Uh, consequences, not about the Chamishim Kesef, but about the Boshes and the Pigam. So the Gemara says, a third of the way down, uh, we have to actually uh, go back in time a little bit. Yesterday, not yesterday, on Shabbos when we learned, we learned a Shita of Rav Ilah. Rav Ilah had said that the Torah went out of its way by Edom Zomamin, and the Torah went out of its way by Chobo Bechavero to teach us that they pay Mamon. But Rabbi Lazar disagrees with Rabbi Lazar in regards to the Mari Makomos. And that's where we're picking up now, which is a different approach to what Rabbi Lazar said. Rabbi Lazar's shita, if you want to, ju- to just look at it, is 10 lines down or so from the bottom of Lamed Beis and Beis. And there he had said that the Torah was Ripsa, Beferish Torah, Ripsa, Ripsa Torah, Edim Zomim, and the Tashlum, and the same was true for, for Chobel Bechavero. So now let's look here and see what Rabbi Lazar says the Mari Makomos are for that. Rabbi Lazar Omer, third of the way down, Lamed Gimel, Lamed Aleph. Rabbi Lazar Omer, Edim Zomim, Mamona, Mishalme, Milka, Umilka, I agree to Rabbi Law's principle that the Torah went out of its way to say that Edim Zomamin and Chobot Bechavero are Chayv and Tashlumen and not in Malkos. But where do we know this from? Says the Gemara, Mishum Delab Bnei Hasra Ninu. Because Edim Zomamin are not allowed to get Hasra, or not able really to get Hasra. And if you can't get Hasra, then what else can't you get? Malkos. Malkos never take place, Malkos Midorai, so never take place without Hasra. So says Rabbi Lazar, I know that Rabbi La brought Amari Makom, that really Adam Zomamin are Mamon, and he quotes a Pasuk, as we saw, 10 lines or so from the bottom, uh, from uh, he quotes a Mishnah there, and he quotes uh, the Psukim, Asisim Lokashir Zomam Laso Asachiv. Says the Gemara, we don't even have to go that far. Adam Zomamin never have Hasra. And because Adam Zomamin never have Hasra, by definition, there's only one consequence left for them, which is to pay money. And says the Gemara, Rava brings a Raya, Amar Rava, Teda. Whenever we see the word Teda in a context like this, it means that we're bringing a proof. Says the Gemara, Teda, I can show you that we are not able to give Hasra to Edim Zomamin. When would you like to warn them? Nisre lehu, Nisre behu, Amos. When will you, will you warn them? Nisre behu meikara. If you want to give them a warning very early on, right right when you meet these guys, you're going to say, hey, uh, just in case you're ever Adam Zomim and just letting you know. So Amri, they're going to say, you warned me so long ago. So Ishtalin, I'm going to forget. And if I forget, so then, uh, okay, then my then my Hasra wasn't valuable. So you can't give the Hasra many days before. Nisri Buhu Bishas Maisa, if you remind them five seconds before they give Adus, oh, by the way, you're about to give testimony right now, not two days ago, right now you're about to give testimony. Oh, you might be Adam Zomim in. Parshe, they're going to separate. They're going to say, I don't want to be an aid. The lo misade, it's not worth the stress. You think I'm going to here to be an aid? I'm not here to be an aid, so I'm just giving you testimony. So says the Gemara, we can't warn aid them right before they testify. And Rava finalizes his argument by saying, Nesri Buhula Vasov, I the Hava Hava. And if they testify after the fact, I'm sorry, if they get warned, if they get Hasra after the testimony, what good is that? My the Hava Hava, the testimony was already, was already locked in. So therefore, Rava is trying to validate the Shita of Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Lazar is of the opinion that when it comes to Edim Zomimin, they're not al- they're not able to get Hasra. There's no timing in which they can get Hasra. Because they can't get Hasra, therefore there's no Malkos. And therefore, what punishment is left? Mamu, just paying the, mummy, the money. But Abaye doesn't like Rava Shita. Well, Rabbi's Shita won't last very long, but Abaye doesn't like Rava Shita. Maskifla Abaye, wait a second. B'nei Srei B'hu Dibor. Why don't you give them warning within Tochke de Dibor of them having finished their testimony? Because anything that's within Tochke de Dibor is considered to be one part. Tochke de Dibor is a very short amount of time in halacha. It's the amount of time where one would say the following sentence, Shalom Alecha, Rebbe Umori, a couple of seconds, two, three seconds. How long does it take? It's not that long. So let's say that the Edim Zomamin or their Edim, we don't know if they're Zomamin yet, Adam give testimony right when they're done, right away, I say. And by the way, in case you're Adam Zomamin, you're going to get punishment X, Y, or Z. And then they have the opportunity to recant. So says Abaye, that should work, Rava. Why is it that Rava said that there's no way to give Hasra to Adam Zomamin? That's not true. 
I can come up with a construct where I can give Adam's where I can give the the Adam Zoman min hasra. And not only that, another possibility halfway down, Maski Floravacha Bray Ravika, here's another way we could give Adus. Vinesre Behu Meikara. I could give the testimony, I can give the warning to them in a, a couple of days ago. A long time ago, I could have given them the warning and they may forget, but Vinir Mas Behu Ramuse, I could just remind them right before they start. By the way, remember, we spoke a couple of days ago, remember Adam, that there's this thing called Adam, Adam Zomamin? So says the Gemara, maybe we should say that there is a possibility to give Hasra to Adam Zomamin. But then Abaye actually retracted his own shita. Hadar Amar Abaye lav mil sehita amri. That which I said is not acceptable. There is no such thing as hasra for Adam Zomamin. Isal kadaitach Adam Zomamin tzrichen hasra. If you want to say that uh, that Adam Zomamin in fact need hasra, then kilo masrinan behu lo kadlinan behu. Then without warnings they shouldn't be killed. What is this talking about? Says the Gemara, Mi ikamidi, the inhu bo katil velo hasra, the inhu bo hasra. Is there a possibility that Adam Zomamin, who are lying about something, will say, Yeah, 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 Ruvain, Ruvain, oh, yeah, we, we saw Ruvain, we were witnesses to Ruvain, and Ruvain really killed somebody, but that was a lie. So there was really no Adus, there was no hasra for Ruvain because the Adam were lying. And now the guys who are lying need hasra. That doesn't make any sense. You can't have it be that these Adam Zomamin, let's say the Adam Zomamin are uh, Shimon and Levi. And Shimon and Levi are saying, Reuben killed Yehuda. No, the Adam Zomamin were lying. They're not, they're not real people. They're not real Adus. So Reuben, who they're trying to get killed because they're saying he killed without a Hasra, then why would then they then need Hasra? That makes no sense. After all, what's the fundamental principle of Adim Zomamin? Of Adim who are lying, says the Gemara. The fundamental principle is We need the cases to be a replica. That which the Adim tried to do to the defendant has to be with them. But with that, with the eight, with, with Ruvain, when they tried to lie, there was no Hasra. Therefore, there cannot be Hasra by him. So Abaye rejects his own Shita. And as well, Maskiflor of Sama Bereid Rav Yirmiya, Elame Atta. If in fact it were to be the case that Adam Zomamin needed Hasra, then Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, the Lomika Asher Zomam Kamisrabi, the boy Hasra. Then what about Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza? Remember, you can't create a scenario of Ben Grusha Ben Let's say I'm a Yisrael and I'm an Aid Zomin. So me and another Yisrael were Adam Zomamin. And we say, oh, he's a Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, which means that he's a Kohen and now he has a flaw. A I'm a Yisrael. You can't make me into a coin to make me into a halal. I'm a Yisrael. So says the Gemara, we're now going to add Hasra to the mix. We don't have anything set up here. Omar Kram, Mishpat Echad, Yelachem, Mishpat Hashav, Elokulchem. Now, Allah has to be the same in all cases. And it's not. It's not. So therefore, of course, says the Gemara, and this is the Raya that that uh, Rav Shisha, that Rabbi Lazar brings, that he argues with Rabbi Law, that really the source that Adam Zomamin are going to pay mamon isn't because of the psukim on lamid beis amad beis, but it's because of the fact that Adim zomamin are not subject to hasra. Because Adim zomamin are not subject to hasra, by definition, you can't get malkos. You can't get malkos without hasra. Therefore, they must pay money. But the second piece of Rabbi Law from yesterday is also going to be argued. Yesterday, Rabbi Law told us based on psukim that chovul bechavero has to pay money. Rav Shisha braid Rabbi Omar. He says. He says, we're 10, 12 lines from the bottom of Lamed Gimel, Ahmed Aleph. And the Gemara says, how do we know that Chovel Bechavero? How do we know that Chovel Bechavero has to pay money? It's not like we saw yesterday from the Sheet of Rabbi Law, but rather from the following Pasuk. If men are fighting, and inadvertently, they uh, they hit a woman who is pregnant. The yatsa yuladeha and her children. Uh, she uh, she loses her children. She she aborts. The amar rebbe lazar b'matzus shebemisa hakasu medaber. The first understanding of this gemara is that what were they fighting about? This was a fight to the death. This was a cage match. These two guys. Someone was going to die by the end. They went in it to it. She was just sitting there watching. She paid. It was pay per view. She was watching and. Uh, <laughs> And they, these guys were going at each other with like brass knuckles and they made a mistake. They, they didn't mean to hit her. They meant to hit him, but the, the swing caught, caught the belly in Nebuch and they killed the children that she was pregnant with. And says the Gemara, that if in fact they caused an ason, they in fact killed her baby. It was an accident. He meant to kill Ruvain. 
and instead he killed the children of the pregnant woman. So then, what would be the case? Hey, Chidami, what was the case over here? Idelo asrube, had there been no hasra, well, then I'm my miktil. Then how could the person be killed? Nefesh tachas nefesh. According to this sheet, we'll see. So the Gemara is going to question this. Nefesh tachas nefesh means that the guy actually gets killed. So it says the Gemara, am I miktil? If there was no weight, no uh, hasra, well, you can't give someone capital punishment without hasra, just like we saw a couple of lines ago. You can't give malkos without hasra. So it says the Gemara, el apshita de asrube. Of course, there was hasra. And why is it that there would be malkos in this case for killing the baby? Because umosra ledavar hacham or have umosra ledavar hakal. This is an assumption that we're going to question that if Ruvain, as he is swinging the brass knuckles towards Shimon, he says, "If you kill Shimon, you're going to be killed." Right. And then inadvertently, he hits the woman and kills the baby for which he's going to have malkos. So it says the Gemara, the hasra for the murder of Ruvain counts for the malkos for the baby. That's what the Gemara says. It's our assumption. And what happens if, in fact, nothing terrible happens? What would we imply if the, if the baby wasn't actually killed, but she was injured? I know she had to pay money. So sophisticated answer. But the Gemara says, this is how we know that the case of Chabol, uh, 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 of Chavol is going to be high of money. That's how we know from this case over here. Says the Gemara, very uh, nicely structured case, but we're going to reject it. Three lines from the bottom. Maski Flaravashi. Mimai de Mosra Ludavar Hamur, Habe Mosra Ludavar Hakal. Who says that when Ruvain is swinging the brass knuckles towards Shimon, and as he's swinging, the two Adam say, if you kill him, you're going to get killed? Who says that that warning? functions on a secondary accidental inadvertent injury which is to hurt the woman and therefore you malkos i didn't warn you for that i warned you for the murder of ruvain you hit a woman who was right th those are not the same warnings so the gemara says who says that the warning on the greater punishment in the murder of the person you're trying to murder in the cage match counts for the malkos of the woman you inadvert in inadvertently hurt who says and even if you say that uh, maybe that's not the case. The im team salomar have it. And even if you want to say that it's true that the warning that you were given to not kill Shimon applies to an, another injury that happened inadvertently, what a crazy idea. Who says that Misa is worse than Malkos? Maybe Malkos is worse than Misa. I don't think so, says the Gemara on the top of Lama Gemma Lama Bez. Dilma Malkos Chamor. Maybe Malkos are actually worse. Why would we ever assume that Malkos are worse than Misa? So says the Gemara. Dama Rav. What? Dama Maybe because you can remember the Malkos and you can't remember death. Not quite. That's not what the Gemara says. Interesting, Svar. That's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, the Amar Rav, il, il, that's right. What's the mean? So the Gemara says in the name of Rav, Il Male Nagduha Lechanani Mishal Ve'azaria Palchu Litzalma. By Hanani, Mishal, and Azaria, when they were told either bow down or die, they said, Kivshan Ha'esh, goodbye, we're jumping in the fire. But says the Gemara, had they been beaten, whipped every day endlessly, Palchul Litzalma, they would have ended up serving the idol. What does that show you? That the long term abuse of lashes is worse than the definite death of fire. The reason it's torture. It's torture, basically. Says the Gemara, that's a terrible svara because of the following thing. Says the Gemara, Amr le Rav Sama Bereda Rav Asi le Rav Ashi, or Ve Amr le Rav Sama Bereda Rav Ashi le Rav Ashi. We don't know if Rav Sama was Rav Ashi's son or it was someone else's son. Either way, the Lo Shani Lach. Don't you make a distinction? Bein Hakashi Yesh Ba Kitzva, La Kashi Ein La Kitzva. There's a difference between Malkos that we give in Bezdin, which is our Vayim Chaser Achas, versus. A, a torturer, terrorist, who doesn't ever stop torturing you. Those are very different psychologies. If you tell me, do I vote a Zara or I'm going to give you 40 lashes, I'll take the lashes. If you tell me, do I vote a Zara or I'm going to torture you for eternity, that's a whole different ballgame. So it says the Gemara, you want to say that maybe Malkos are worse than Misa? Doesn't it depend on how long the Malkos are for? What was Rav talking about? Rav was talking about torture versus Misa, not our Baim Chaser Achas Malkos versus Misa. They're, they're absolutely not the same thing. So says the Gemara, Maski Flor, and, and therefore the Gemara accepts this, uh, accepts this challenge. And then says the Gemara, Maski Flor of Yaakov, Minahar Pekod, this is a person's name, Yaakov from Nahar Pekod. He says, 
There's another problem with the assumption of the Gemara on the bottom of Lamed Gimel Lamed Aleph, and that is, nefesh mamish. we had wanted to say on the Gemara that the uh, that the Marimakom for Chovel Bechavero is this sophisticated argument about whether or not we... Uh, whether or not this woman was killed and uh, in the whole process of the fighting. And we assumed that that really it was nefesh tachas nefesh. It says the Gemara, that's only true for that shita. Ha nicha l'rabbon and da'amre nefesh mamish. I understand your approach of chovel b'chaveru to find a mari makom for Rav Shisha B'reid Ravidi. I understand if you're holding like the sheet of the Rabbanon, that we actually hold nefesh tachas nefesh. That when you kill this person, you then get killed. Elo, the Rebbe. So the Gemara says, by nefesh tachas nefesh, there's a machlok as tanoim. So therefore, if that's true, our argument at the bottom of the page only makes sense according to the sheet of the Rabbanan who holds nefesh tachas nefesh is mamish. Elo, the Rebbe, damar mamon, Michael the Maymar. Then your whole argument falls to house of cards because one of the fundamental pillars of your argument was nefesh tachas nefesh, and we inferred that in a case where someone didn't die, then it's malchus. But that argument only works if it's nefesh tachas nefesh. But the rabbanon don't hold that way. Ella says the Gemara. There has to be another marimakom for chovel bechaveru. Ella amar Reb Yaakov minahar pekod mishmei the Rava mehacha. If a person gets injured and then all of a sudden he's able to walk on his own, al mishanto, he's walking by his own volition, he's healed. Then the Gemara says, Then the guy who injured him is in the clear. Well, thank you very much. Why would I kill the guy who hurt him if he's fine? Says the Gemara, You might have thought, that the victim, he's let go of the hospital. He's walking around. Okay, he's got a cane. He's got a nice little a hush of cane with like the, the diamond on top. Something. He's a hush of a guy. But he's fine. He's fine. You're going to go kill the guy who injured him? Of course not. That can't be shot in the Pasuk. Says the Gemara, Ella, we are a quarter of the way down. We're going to go almost to the bottom of the page. Says the Gemara, Ella, so what's Pasuk teaching us? That we keep this guy in jail. And what we look at is whether or not the victim will be healed. The E miss. If the guy that he killed, that he that he injured, actually died, and he, he died, then cut Linale, then we kill the murderer. The Elomis, but if in fact the guy that he injured survived, Shivto Yitain Virapo Yerape, then we see that yes, he has to pay damages. And therefore, what do we see? That when you're Chobel Bechavero, you pay money. This is our third attempt at giving an, uh, giving an answer for Chovel Bechavero. Our first attempt was on Shabbos based on Psukim. Our second attempt was today on the bottom of Lama Gimel Amad Aleph with the sophisticated thing with the Isha Hara, that they're fighting to the death, Bematzos Bemisa, and then in fact she didn't die. And here's our third Mari Makom. That he has to give Sheves and he has to pay for healing. Hechidami says the Gemara. What is going on in this case over here that Rav Yaakov Minahar Pekot is presenting as a source for pays money. If there was no hasra, am I miktal? There never could be a habamina that someone could be killed without Aiden, without hasra. So therefore, we must assume elapshita de asrube. And then the Gemara attempts this svara like it attempted before. And in fact, we're going to assume again that if I give the warning for the murder, if I give hasra for murder, but then a lesser crime took place. Asra for the murder works for the lesser crime. And and therefore the Torah still says we give money. That money overrides Malchus. Says the Gemara. Again, we questioned this svara before. We're going to question it again. How do you know that a warning for the, pun for the crime of murder works as a warning for a crime of Malchus? They're not the same things. It's totally, let's say I warn someone, if you kill this person, if you kill this person, you're going to, you're going to have to die. By the way, if you eat this piece of busser, you're, you're going to get malchus. They're totally different warnings. And even within one crime, if you punch the guy in the face, you will die. And even if the guy doesn't die, you're still, that hasra counts. Why does that hasra count? The hasra, the warning that you give has to be on the mark. And if it's not on the mark, it shouldn't count at all. But even if you want to say that it should work, we still have another problem. Says the Gemara, Dilma Malkos Chamor, maybe, uh, even if you want to say that the 
that the warning for murder works for our lesser crime. Mimai de Misa Chamura, the same question we asked above, just we asked it within the name of a different shita, but we're asking it here under Rav Yaakov Minahar Pekod. Dilma Malkos Chamur, Dama Rav Ilmale, Nagdu Ala Chanani Mishal Azaria, Palchul Salma, that had it been that Chanani Mishal and Azaria were threatened with, with, you know, the torture chamber, waterboarding, so then maybe they would have given in, which by the way, so uh, it's a crazy zach to say that about uh, Nevi'im, that they would have given in to Avodah Zarah for torture. But the Gemara assumes that, right? You see that's very, twice today. The Gemara assumes that if Hanani, Michelle, and Azaria were threatened with long-term torture, they would have failed. That's what the Gemara assumes. Which I think it's hard. Again, it's hard to fathom, hard to fathom any of that. I'm, I don't know if any of us are up to the test, but I hope we never get tested. But the Gemara says that Hanani, Michelle, and Azaria might not have ever uh, withstood the test of torture. So therefore we see says the Gemara that maybe lashes are worse. Amar lei rav sama b'rei de rav asi lirav ashi v'amri lei rav sama b'rei de rav ashi lirav ashi don't you make a distinction v'lo shani lach ben akashi yesh la kitzva kitzva akashi ain la kitzva they're totally different cases. You can't compare long-term torture versus 40 lashes. They're not the same thing. So that's why the Gemara says that uh, that this argument is not a good argument. Maski flo rav mari mi mai de b'mezi v'nika miktala why did you learn the pasuk the way that you did? Who says that the pasuk which says the pasuk that of Rav Yaakov Mibin Pekod not Mibin Pekod but Yaakov Mipekod not Mibin Nahar Pekod? So he said the pasuk says Vim Yakum Vihisalech Bachutz Al Mashi Al Mishan Tovani Kamake. You assumed Rav Yaakov that the pasuk was talking about a mezi Vinika Mikatla and he saved his life Dilma B'Shogeg Vinika Migalus. Maybe it was an accidental murder. And what the Pasuk means of Vinika is that the Pasuk gives an exception. You don't have to go to Gullus. The Gol Adam cannot kill you in such a case, says the Gemara Kasha. That's Taka, a good point. That maybe the Pasuk isn't read the way that Rav Yaakov read it. This Pasuk is not clear. All it says is Vinika Hamake, that the guy who injured him was saved. So if the guy who injured him was saved, hey, but how, who says it was from murder, uh, intentional murder? Maybe it was accidental murder. It was an accident. It was accidental, then he does go to the game. So the Pasuk is saying it would be an exception to the rule here, but the Pasuk of Vinika Maka. No, just because the Torah says Vinika Maka in this case, in this particular case. Well, when would a person go to the game if he killed someone? In a case that, in a case where, uh, in this case, where it wasn't uh, this Pasuk. This Pasuk is giving a unique ukimta where he would be pater from Gullus. In general, yes, but in this case, no. So maybe this Pasuk's talking about Gullus. Says the Gemara, Kashem, that's very possible. That we don't really have clarity on that. That's true. Two thirds of the way down, a little bit more. Rish Lakish Amar Hamani, what is this talking about? So this Gemara structurally, the Gemara we've been learning today is actually pieces of three Gemaras and really it requires a flow chart, but we don't have time for that. This Gemara is actually going back to something we learned a couple of days ago on Shabbos. On Shabbos, we learned about a stira between our Mishnah here in Ksubis and the Mishnah in Maseches Makos. We gave the answer of Ula. We gave the answer of Rav Yochanan. And this is answer number three. So it's not being presented cleanly in regards to the general flow of the Gemara, answer one, answer two, answer three. It's being presented quite uh, over uh, over many pages. But the Gemara now says, Rish Lakish Amar, Hamani, let's go back and try to give a third answer. Ula said that one is talking about this, one is talking about that. Remember we said one is talking about Nara, one is talking about Bogaris. And then the case of Rabbi Yochanan, one was talking about Hasra, one was not talking about Hasra. Hamani says, Rish Lakish, I'm going to give my own third answer. Says the Gemara, Reb Meir He. Da Amar, Loke, Umeshaling. Oh, this is a new shita. So when we talk about Kamle Bidaraba meaning, we saw the shita of Ula that if it's Mamon and Malkos, you pay money. We saw Rav Yochanan that if it's Mamon and Malkos, you pay Malkos. Now we're seeing Rav Meir, you pay both. There's no cleaning of the slate. The fact that you did a crime that deserves two punishments, good for you. You get two punishments. That's your problem. It's actually a chiddish to assume you only get one punishment, right? Like if you have a child who does multiple things wrong, you don't only give the greater or the lesser consequence. Whatever the kid needs is what he gets. Really in parenting, that's not how it works. You have to kind of make a cheshben as you're parenting, which one is going to be affected without hurting the relationship. Fine, you, you figure out what's going to be affected. I told one of my kids last night at like 10 o'clock, I'm like cleaning up mozzarella from the side. I'm like ready to go to bed, I'm tired. So I said to my son, uh, Usher, he was not the, the culprit in this case. I said, you know what? As a parent, sometimes I want to do this. Any child who leaves out anything, I put that thing on their bed. I don't care if it's a dirty pot, a dirty pan, dirty socks. I don't care what it is. It's going on your bed until you learn to clean up after yourself. It's a nice idea. It's a nice idea, except that it's not a nice idea because where's the pan going to end up in the morning? Okay. Under their bed. So that doesn't solve any problems. So it's not a good parenting move because it won't work. We have to be effective in our parenting. Either way, Rav Meir is saying both consequences, Mam Mamon and Malkos, we get both. Now, Irav Meir, if Rav Meir is right that the punishment is like that, why does the Mishnah only focus on the case of Achosa? 
Maybe afilu bito nami. Now, the, the, the punishment of a sister and the punishment of a daughter is different. With the sister, there's Malkos, with, or, or Karis, depending on the case, and Bito, he gets killed. So it says the Gemara, Afilu Bito Nami. Rashi says, it's Misa and Malko, and Misa and Aknas. Why doesn't our mission include both? If Rav Meir is a double consequence kind of guy, be a double consequence everywhere, not just when it's Mammon and Malkos, but even when it's Mammon and Misa, says the Gemara. The Chitema, if you want to say, Rav Meir Lokim Mishalim Islay, Mesu Mishalim Leslay, if you want to say that Rav Meir is willing to give a double consequence when the consequences are Malkos and Mammon, but not when the consequences are Misa and Mammon, that's not true below. Would he not give a double consequence when it comes to Misa and Mamon Vatanya? Gon Abu Tavach B'Shabes. If a person steals something and they shecht it on Shabbos, they steal an animal and shecht it, oh, that's a big problem. You owe somebody money and you killed an animal on Shabbos, which means you, you're chayv because you violated Shabbos. And a couple of other cases, Gon Abu Tavach L'Avodas Kochavim. You steal and then you shecht someone's animal for Avodas Kochavim or Gon Abu Shohan Iskal Or you, share, share, you steal an animal that deserves killing and then you shecht it. In all of those cases, Now, the first of those cases is a case of Misa and Mamon. It's it's Shabbos. You shechted an animal. You're a dead man. You're Chayv Skila. By the way, you also owe money. And what does he say? Chayv Tashlumen. We see that you're obligated obligated in both, according to Rav Meir. So it says the Gemara, maybe Rav Meir should have included in our mission the case of Bito, his daughter, where it's Misa and Mamon. Why only include the case of Achos, the sister, which is going to be Malkos and Mamon says the Gemara. We already uh, we already answered this question. Oh, it's Marala. I'm a Rabbi Yaakov. I'm a Rabbi Yochanan. I'm a Rabbi. I'm a Rabbi Yirmiyah. I'm a Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. Rabbi Avin. The Rabbi Lav. The Chol Chav Rusa. Mishmed. Rabbi Yochanan. Amrei. Everybody says in learning this sugya, what was this brayso talking about? The Machlokes of Meir the Chachamim, where we see that if one violates Shabbos by killing an animal, yes, he is going to be obligated in both. That was in a case of the Tovech al Yedei Acher. The Shechita was done by somebody else. Hmm. Says the Gemara. If the shechita was done by somebody else, then that's not me. Says the Gemara, I don't understand. How, how could I be held accountable in both? I didn't do both actions. I stole, but I didn't do the tzvicha. Says the Gemara, Crazy limud. The Gemara says, what does the Pasuk teach us? Just like by mechira. Mechira, I can only have a sale with another person, right? So therefore, just like I have need a second, I need someone to sell to in order to violate selling, right? So then if that's true, the Gemara says that even though I didn't do the shechita, I will be held accountable. Crazy idea. And a couple of drushes to bring this as a rai, and then we'll stop. Rav Chizkiya looks at the word tachas in the Pasuk to say, yes, we include the shaliach that he's held accountable. And maskif la, uh, sorry, I skipped a line. Rav Chizkiya Tana these two shitas as well include the shaliach that he's going to be held accountable. But this is not a classical case where one person is really fully obligated in regards to Bito, his daughter, which would be Misa and Mamun. That's not the case of Rav Meir. Therefore, we don't yet know about the shita of Rav Meir in regards to our case. We'll have to analyze that more another time. Uh, from now on for the next week, we're learning one vlad a day via uh, recordings. I'll post them in WhatsApp, and Mirza Shem will also try and post them to uh, to the podcast as well. Wishing you all a beautiful day and a beautiful week, and see you when I get back. Thank you. Yep.